something on that's been hidden inside of you and allow you to see it you see good days and then you go chasing after bad days I, I, I never want to taste the bitterness of my life ever again man ever again you, 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 you have to stay in the will of God you have to stay in the will of God because that's the safety place the will of God for your life. And a lot of times, the will of God is not a necessarily a comfortable place for us. You, you know what I mean? You can make it comfortable. Have, have, have you ever had to uh, live somewhere um, and, and, and you have to make it home? You have to dress it up. It's just the conditions of life right now. It's the situation that you're going through. And, and you just have to make this thing work for you, right? It's like that when you first start serving God, that, that it's so different than what you've been through up to that point that you have to make it work. You, you know, I think about the pillows I have. You, you, you know, I won't spend a lot of money on pillows, right? I don't know why pillows cost so much. <laughs> I found out whatever causes you pain, they're going to make you pay for, Right? And, and, like, I'll go to Walmart, and I'll test all the pillows out, and I'll buy the expensive Walmart pillow, right? And then a couple months, that's just as flat as the rest of them. So, you know, I, I, I sleep with, you know, about four pillows. And I prop them up real nice at night, and, you know, I, I'm a big boy, so I got to sleep, you know, a certain way. By the end of the night, I'm, I'm like this. And that, and, 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 but, but think about this. This could be our walk. Right? You're always trying to prop up your walk. You're always trying to prop up your walk, but it, it's what you want and not necessarily what God wants. And the reason why it's pain is because it's not the will of God, right? It's the will of Jamal, maybe. It's, it's my will, right? And so because my will gets in the way and not God's will, because God's will is perfect, right? His will is perfect. With the things that we will in life, the things that we will... A lot of times, just one, just it's just us trying to produce comfort. But what God wills is to produce prosperity. He wants peace and joy, and He wants longevity and endurance. He wants these things out of our lives. But but because we want quick fixes, we love microwaves, right? We love microwave food. We love. I mean, some of y'all don't. Some of y'all might cook every day. Invite me over. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It's the will of God for my life. <laughs> but I do want to talk to you about God's will because, because I want to talk to you later about walking in the will of God, right? But if I don't tell you what God's will is, how do you know how to walk in the will of God, right? Uh, it, you, you know, it, it, if you know me, I'm, I'm, I'm a teacher, and so it's important not to just say, here's how to walk in the will of God when you don't even know what the will of God is. Right? It's like telling a student who's never seen something before, go solve this problem. Well, if you haven't explained it to them, right, you can't assume that that, that kid knows what they're doing because they don't even know what it is. I, I don't know what they've done to math, right? I, I, I mean, in the 70s, 80s, and in the 90s, math was done one way. Now, all of a sudden, math is done some other way. And, and I say, well, why, won't you just do, you know, right here and right here and draw a line, and then there's the answer. Why do I have to go backwards? And why do I have to go sideways? I don't understand to get to the same answer. Well, I've known how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide all my life. But because they haven't shown me the new way, it makes me look like a 10-year-old or 11-year-old knows more than me, right? And so it, it, a lot of times you just need to know what it is so you can accomplish it. Amen? Amen? Because if you don't know what it is, how can you accomplish something? And God gives us knowledge in order for us to operate in wisdom, right? 
because the proper use of knowledge is wisdom. And so because the proper use of knowledge is wisdom, I need to know what God's will is, not necessarily God's will for my life, because now I'm in this selfish place, right? But it ultimately, listen, it ultimately comes to being selfish and personal. You, you see what I'm saying? But in order for me to get to the place where it's about me, I first have to get to the place where it's about him. You, you see what I'm saying? Because the Bible says that he makes me lie down in green pastures for his namesake, right? He didn't bring me to a good place in my life for me. He brought me to a good place in life for him so he can get glory out of my life. And, and I think this is where Christianity has failed in, in, in these modern times because we try to get to a good place for us, right, instead of a good place for God. The power is not in you, people. The power is still in God. I know it's 2018, but the power still lies in Jesus and not in me. Amen? And so, and so the power is wrapped up in God's will, right? And, 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 and a lot of us don't know what that is. We just don't know what the will of God. And think about what I teach. The soul is the mind, the will, the intellect, the imagination, and the heart. So, so this is the eternal part of man, right? The soul is the eternal part. You can't put your finger on your mind. You can't put your finger on the flesh part of your heart, but we're talking about the soulish part of your heart, right? We're talking about the intellect. You can't put finger on intellect. You can't put finger on imagination. And so this is the eternal part of you. And so because this is the eternal part of you, we got to find out about the one who has given us this eternal aspect of our living. And so God's will, will can be defined as a being's rational inclination towards its own good. That's us, right? There's, a, there's an inclination. There's an inclination that you want to have. L listen, even if it causes pain, even if the outcome is pain, if there's pleasure in it, okay, 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 so, so scientists say that man operate on id, childlike desires, ego, right? Ego, which is, if I can get away with it, I, I'll do it, and then super ego, it's wrong and I won't do it, right? And so if, if a person is operating on a level of an id, uh, uh, childlike desires, even though they know the outcome is painful, they'll do whatever they want to do just to get the outcome and deal with the pain later. And so, so will can be defined as a being's rational inclination towards its own good. But now we have to define good, right? Because if we don't define good, then whatever's good for me is good. But we have to define good as in whatever is good for the one who is really good, right? The, the, think about it. When, when, when they called Jesus good, Jesus said, why are you calling me good? He, there's only one that's good. Goodness comes from the Lord, right? Every good and perfect gift come down from the Father of lights, right? And, there, and, and listen, and there is no change in him. You see what I'm saying? And so think about how we change, change, change. We change, switch up on people all the time. You know how many people come in, get saved, right? They get saved, and they got all this zeal and all these things going on, and they say, Pastor, I'm never going to leave you. <laughs> and at first, I believed them. Oh, praise the Lord. Baby, they said they ain't never going to leave. And she said, oh, that's good. She don't want, she don't want to step on my little heart, right? Whatever, whatever has intellect, y'all going to let me teach today? Okay. Whatever has intellect also has will, for will follows upon intellect, right? So think about, think about where your intellect is compared to God's intellect, Think about the things that you know compared to this one who is the ancient of days. Think about the one who is the, the dispenser of intellect, right? Compared to what you know, right? So now it says, further, every nature inclines to its own proper end or good. When the end is rational, then the inclination is a rational inclination. So what it's saying is, is that if, if, it's, if it's rational, right? then you're inclined to do things that will produce good things, right? And so this is this talking about God. God has rational inclination toward the good of his own nature. 
and therefore God has will, right? And so what it's saying is, is that God can't do anything but good. Well, God's testing me. That's why there's problems in my life. Really? Is, did, did, really did he really sin the problem? Did he, did he really do that? Or did you sow it? You, you, did you cast seed? Right? Come on, next slide. Having will does not mean that God changes, for the object of God's will is his divine goodness. And whatever is in oneself necessitates no movement outside oneself to attain. What he's saying is he can't do anything but be good. God can't do anything but be good. So think about this. The more you subject yourself to the things of God, what is going to come out of your life? You, you see what I'm saying? What are you going to produce? Are you going to produce you or are you going to produce God? Because let me tell you something. If I would have stayed on the outside of God and not dove into the things of God, I still would be doing things that I did 14 and 15 years ago. Because Antoine said, you gotta, you, we, we got to be related somehow. Something, uh, Hennessy and Heineken's. I mean, I just, it's just, it's just, it's just. Strip clubs. I mean, I mean, I just, I just, I, pastors told me I was going to see myself one day. I am delivered. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Teresa is thanking God right now. So is Keith. <laughs> Hence, God does not have to move outside himself to attain his own proper end. And will is an inclination to one, toward one's own end. What do you want to produce? What do you want to produce? Listen, does your, does your attitude, does your disposition produce your outcome? Because, listen, if you have a negative disposition and an angry, nasty uh, uh, character or personality, is it necessarily producing what you really want in your heart, what you really want in your will. And so what you have to figure out, where am I not like God? Where am I not acting like God? Because if I'm not acting like God, here's where this spiritual inventory comes into place. We must what? Check ourselves. Because if we do not check ourselves, we'll overlook and live life based on instinct and feeling instead of knowing the will of God, right? Come on, ride with me for a second. So there is will in God in so much, in as much as he inclines toward his own good, will, so, will also involves love and delight what is possessed. God loves and delights in the possession of his own nature. See, you got to love yourself, right? Listen, when you get up in the morning, you got to say, oh, my God, I love me, right? If you don't like yourself, you can't like anything else. Like, like I, I mean, you know, I might nece not necessarily like how I look. Because donuts, cupcakes. <laughs> cupcakes, temptation. We talked about that last week. But I do like me. And the reason why I like me is only because I like the will of God operating in my life. Because there was a point when I used to get up in the morning, check this out, and I would say, my God, who are you? Because life was tearing me up. And I would look in the mirror, and my eyes was bloodshot, and my skin wasn't right, and, 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 and I could tell that the drugs were, were tearing me up. And I would say to myself, who are you? Is this what God intended for me? And at night, I would lay on my bed, and I would cry sometimes, and I would pray. And i said, say, God, I know there's something else for me. See, I was still looking for me instead of looking for him. At the moment that I got into his will, all of a sudden, all the treasures that God had placed in me from the foundation of the world was unlocked. See, 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 you keep looking for your purpose. What am I supposed to do, God? What do you want me to do? It's not about you. You got to serve him in his will first. Then you will see you. You're trying to see you first. And so because it don't work for you, you stop giving you to God because it's not about you. It's about him. And so you got it confused. 
You got it all twisted up thinking this thing's about you, and it's really about God. Because if it was about you, you should have been the one being beat up on the cross. Come on. And that's why life's beating you up. Because he's trying to crucify your flesh to get in his will. Come on, next slide. Oh, Becca, I forgot the last sentence. Check this out. This is very important. Therefore, God has will in the sense of delight, but not in the sense of desire. He delights in himself. He, God, he loves himself, right? I delight in the fact that I live within the will of God. Listen, listen. When I was living the other way, right, when I was living a life of sin, it was hard. It was easy to commit sin, but the outcomes were always hard. It, it, you know, the reason why one arm's shorter than the other is because I got shot because I wasn't living in the will of God. The reason why my breathing is sometimes the way it is is because all the things that I put in my system because I wasn't living in the will of God. The reason why I got a hole in my nose is because all the coke I sniffed because I wasn't living in the will of God. You, you, you see what I'm saying? But now that I delight in the things of the Lord, right? Now that I, I delight in the things of the Lord, all the things, all the things that I planted, right? I don't have to deal with anymore. I can only deal with the will of God. And so as I deal with the will of God, li listen, this is where first Peter comes in when he says, okay, now add to your, fir your faith virtue. Now start getting excellent in this thing, right? And after you add virtue to it, add some more knowledge. Learn some more stuff. Then be diligent with it, right? And then as you start going on, you start adding the things, all of a sudden you start understanding the will of God more and more and more. And the reason why you don't have this understanding and your, and your unction is gone is because the feeling of being a baby in Christ is over and there's a responsibility that comes along with this thing and there's something that you have to do about it. See, 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 when, when it's fresh and new and it's, and it's happy-go-lucky and God's sitting on the back of the bike and you're on the training wheels and you're like, you got it? I ain't even got to look. I ain't even got to look because you're doing everything, God. See, that's fun. But when the training wheels come off and you're wobbling and falling down and scuffing your knees, it's because you didn't pay attention when he was teaching you how to drive. Come on, next slide. So God said... Let us, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, make mankind in our image, right? And after our likeness, and let, have, let him have complete authority over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, the tame beast, and over all the earth and everything that creeps upon earth. He said, let me, okay, he said, oh, he said, okay, check this out. Who I am, I'm going to put in you, right? Let us make man in our image and in our likeness, right? this mirror image of who I am. Check us out. Next slide. Look. Genesis. So God created man in his own image. In the image and likeness of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them, right? And so God makes us in his image, and God gives us the ability to really be good people because he's given us a moral compass to know right and wrong from the door. Okay, who? She just started walking? She's not walking? She not walking. What, how old is she? One. One. Couple months, she gonna, couple weeks maybe, she might be walking. When she's stealing, right, and you ask her where it's at and she starts hiding it, it's because she's, she's been, it's, it's, it's already in her to have a moral compass. She already knows right and wrong. See, see these little ones right here, right? When y'all know y'all did something wrong in school and you don't want, you, you be hiding that letter in your book bag that they sent home. <laughs> la, 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 I hit you. I hit him. I hit him. I hit him. I hit him. There it is. I knew I'd find one. <laughs> oh, you, oh, oh, it's two. Okay. You see what I'm saying? That there's, there's, there's a moral compass in man to know right and wrong just by instinct. And it's this, it's this, 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 it's God that we locate in our lives. God, God has, has put scales in man for man to be able to be able to check his soul, to know, think about, think about when you're about to do something that you know is wrong, how it makes you feel inside. 
if you don't feel any way about wrong, it's because you're numb to Holy Spirit, but you still know wrong. You don't feel the wrong because Holy Spirit's conviction is not getting through the callous heart that you have. Your will is so caught up in yourself that you're missing God in this, in this, in this moment. But when you find God, well, listen, when you can locate God in yourself and all of a sudden when you're about to do something wrong and that feeling that comes, it doesn't stop you all the time because you're trying to get to your end, right? And so because you're trying to get to your end and not God's end, you push past Holy Spirit and execute you instead of executing God. But it's not that God didn't create you in his image. It's not that God didn't give you his likeness. It's you being shaped by sin, right? Born into sin and shaped by iniquity. And so because iniquity has shaped your life, perpetual sin, right? Perpetual sin has shaped your life. That's why the outcome is not pleasurable towards God, but pleasurable to you only for a season. Eventually, it's going to hurt. Come on, next slide. So God wills causes things to be, right? Whew. How? By faith, right? God has enough in him that he can produce whatever he wants, right? Simply because God wills things only in himself does not mean that he wills only himself. He can will whatever he wants within himself, but most likely it's not for him. It's for us, right? It says, for it is in accord with the nature of being to communicate its good to others, right? Think about the things that you accomplish. You so want to tell somebody about it, right? Yeah, look, guess what I did, right? What'd you do? I did X, Y, and Z. Oh, and this is what you want to hear. This is what you want to hear. Oh, that's good. Why? Because you want to be exalted. When you do good, you tell somebody because there's something in you that wants to be high and lifted up. And, and, and it's okay because we, we really want to be like God. We want praise too. But we have to learn to take that and say, glory be to God. Right? You, 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 you know how many times I hear, Pastor, you preach such a good sermon. If, if I'm not careful, I'll have the mind of Satan and say, I don't need God to preach. I don't need God to do anything when he's the, he's the one who called and gave me the gift. So I have to make sure, listen, a lot of times when y'all say that, I don't like what I've preached. Almost 80%. I get in the car with my wife, I get home. I said, babe, what you think about that? She was like, it's good. I was like, mm. let it be bad, though. Mm. <laughs> That's what she do. Mm. Like it stunk a little bit. And God is being par excellence. He is the source of all beings. Hence, it is in accord with the nature of God to will others, other beings than himself. Come on, next slide. Look, look, look at this. Look. By faith, listen, God's will causes things to be produced, right? God, by faith, we understand that the worlds during the successive ages were framed, fashioned, put in order, and equipped for their intended purposes purpose by the word of God so that we see what was not made out of things which are visible. So check this out. That's Hebrews 11.3 for you, Aaron. <laughs> right? So look, look at this. God made us in his image and likeness. And God said, let there be light. And it was so. Why? Because of his goodness. Right? So check this out. Check this out. Now, we go to Hebrews 11.3, and it says, By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. That's King James Version, right? So check this out. In God's likeness, in his will, what do you want to produce? See, 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 check this out. When, when I was trying to stop selling drugs back in 2002, right? I took all this money, and I put it on the entertainment center, right? And I said, Father, <laughs> check this out. Because it was my will, right? I said, Lord, help me stop selling drugs. Help me stop hustling. So I, I have this great idea. I'm going to throw a 50 cent concert in Martinsburg. So I did it. And I lost all my money. Only 400 people showed up. I needed 1,000, right? 
to flip my money. God let me have the concert, but it wasn't in his will to prosper me that way, right? The night when the concert was over, my mom and my wife was telling me, if you would have did this, if you would have did that, guess what I was doing? I was sitting on the floor crying because I was trying to still get my will. I wasn't willing to go broke for God. I wasn't willing to change all the way for God. I still wanted my substance, but I wanted God to give me substance. Listen, I wish that you be in health and prosper as your soul prospers. The soul, the mind, the will, the intellect, the imagination, the heart must prosper before God can do anything in your life. He's got to fix you eternally, not internally, but eternally before he can prosper you externally. And so if he doesn't, if you don't allow him to do the work on the inside, you're never going to see what that's the, the, the desires of your heart because you will use them the wrong way. Eventually, when Jamal got bored, if he would allow me to have more substance, eventually when Jamal got bored, guess what Jamal would have did with the substance? Because my heart was crooked, because my hands were dirty, right? Because my heart was not renewed. Because my hands were dirty, I would have stuck my hands right back in the mud because my heart, my soul, would have drove me to doing wrong. See, it wasn't until I was stripped of Jamal and stepped into the will of God that I had any fulfillment in life. I didn't know how to be a father. I didn't know how to be a husband. I didn't know how to even function in my own life until I stepped into the will of God. And when I stepped into the will of God, think about this. Being in this whole building and there's no walls, there's no light, there's no nothing. This is what it felt like for me to step into the will of God. It was like nothing, silence, darkness. And then all of a sudden, as I just started listening to his voice, See, see, see the increase. The, thank you, Father, the favor. I was like, see, it produces supernatural increase. The increase is in his mouth. Because he's going to speak his will. He's going to speak his will to something that is not tangible. He's going to speak his will into a dimension that's in you that is eternal and not physical. And the only way you're going to see his light is if you learn to listen. Because, because as you begin to listen, all of a sudden this light appears, this glimmer. This glimmer of light begins to appear. And as you, I'm giving you an analogy. This is not Bible. Because y'all might think, where's that at in the Bible? This glimmer of light begins to appear, and all of a sudden, you can see different. You hear different. Your taste, your spiritual taste buds are different. But if you don't chase his voice and chase the other voices that are in your head, girl, if I was you, who said you're not? Come on, next slide. See, you can't see without faith. You got to see somewhere else before you can see somewhere else. God must will and can will. God will th will things in two, two ways. Some things, his own goodness, for example, he must will. He cannot choose to will otherwise. God cannot go against his own nature. God can do anything but lie, right? Because lying goes against his nature. So check this out. When you go, when you lie, just by nature, right? Because men are sinful. We're, we're liars, right? When the boss says, did you do such and such? And you go, mm-hmm, I did it. Okay, good. And then you run and go do it? Just because you intended to do it now doesn't mean you didn't lie. Because what happens when he goes checks before he asks you next time? Did you do X, Y, and Z? Uh-huh. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. That's what she does. That's what you used to do to me. She gathered receipts out of my glove box. On August 15th, uh, I'd be like, what? I ain't never even been there. She pulled my receipt out of her purse. Did her for two. <laughs> Like, oh my God. <laughs> this, this chick then. Is she God? <laughs> Lord, is that you? <laughs> 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 
These things he wills with absolute necessity. Other things God wills with it with conditional necessity. The goodness of creatures, for example. Example, whatever is willed by conditional necessity is not absolutely necessary. Creation is willed by conditional necessity. Okay. This is good, though. This is good. Are y'all cold? Okay. Hook them up, Antoine. Conditional necessity, right? So, so, so check this out. Check this out. This is good. Because now, maybe we have the ability to alter God's will for our life. Think about this. Think about this. But it's still going to be based in his goodness. You just don't get whatever you want because you want it with your spoiled self. Well, God didn't answer me, so I'm done with church. So what? He didn't answer you. Because he knows more than you. He's the only thing in our tomorrow. And so because he's the only thing in in our tomorrow, so what you wanted it real bad? So what? Sit your little butt down and wait on the will of God. Because you still may get it, you just not may not be ready for it. Come on, next slide, Alex. Come on. Therefore, my dear ones, as you have always obeyed my suggestions, so now not only with enthusiasm you would show in my presence, but much more because I am absent. Work out, cultivate, carry out to the goal, and fully complete your own souls, your own salvation with reverence and awe and trembling, self-distrust, self-distrust, self-distrust. Se- Listen, somebody say that with me. Self-distrust. Stop relying on you. That's why you didn't get it. See, because if we back up, he says, with enthusiasm, right? See, praising God before you see it. Thank you, Jesus. Praising God before you see it. Listen, and it still might not be in his will because you're not in his will, right? So as you praise God to get that you're going to see it, but you still ratchet. You, you got you to, you got to, I was not talking about. I was just staying here, I promise. He says, in my presence, but much more because I am absent, work out. See? Work out. There's something that has to come along with you. Cultivate. Carry out to the goal and fully complete your own salvation with reverence. Reverence. That means, listen, not only just in work that you reverence the Lord, but how you walk on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. What comes out of your mouth when you're angry? Be angry and sin not. These are the things that are in the will of God, right? How, how, how can you walk in the will of God and beg God for things that, that will, will cause you to walk in pride? Look what I have done. He ain't do nothing. Let, 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 him, let him treat you like he treated Saul. Y'all don't even know what I'm talking about. Mm, y'all deep. <laughs> King Saul. King Saul, right? King Saul was his anointed. King Saul didn't do what God said do, right? Samuel came in and said, why why didn't you do it? He said, I did everything. He said, no, 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 you didn't do everything. You did what you thought was right, and you let that man live. You let that king live. King Agai, I think his name was. Check this out. Check this out. He said, okay. Samuel said, the prophet Samuel said, bring him to me. He took an axe to the king and tore him to pieces because it had nothing to do with the will of God. And then the anointing left Saul and God left Saul on the throne as king, but the anointing went to David. You can be still seated as king and think you're ruling when you don't have God's anointing at all. See, see, that's the self-distrust, distrust. 
with serious caution. With serious caution, tenderness of conscience, being open to God, right? Watchfulness against temptation, timidly shrinking from whatever might offend God and discredit the name of Christ. Listen, Saul meant to be, so, to, to be small. He said, when you were small in your own sight, that's when you were great. He said, now that you sit on this throne and do what you want, instead of doing what the, what the one who put you on the throne wants, you sit there. You sit there on that throne. I'm on, going over here with this little ruddy boy that been playing in, in, in sheep poop. And this is a crazy thing about David. Y'all see where I'm going in a couple weeks. I, I, I've been reading this. This is a funny thing about David. David messed up so many times. But for some reason, God said, this is a man after my own heart. See, see, it's not in your accomplishments that you walk in the will of God. It's in your intentions. It's your intentions. And so because it has to be in your intentions and not in your activity, because you can show me whatever you want to show me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, every Sunday. Praise the Lord. Are, the, are, are there in, everything in order? Is everything right? Is everything right? And you get home and you nasty cussing people out. You ride in the car, you got road rage. You're putting the wrong finger in the air. You're in church with this finger. Woo! It's your religious self. Put your finger down. Go to the bathroom. I can see you at work. <laughs> Waiting for the boss to acknowledge you. So you go to pee. Go pee. <laughs> Come on, next slide, man. Say, I will, I will not, not discredit, discredit the name of Christ. Check this out. A couple weeks ago, about a month or so ago, I went and asked my pastor for some permission. And this is what he said. You have my permission. Don't make me look bad. I said, well, I, at first I thought to myself, well, what I'm doing, what does that have to do with you? Who, who, who you represent? Right? Well, okay, wait a minute. This is what I thought about. This is my thought process, why I'm representing Christ. But as I serve Christ, follow me as I, and it's, it's important for every Christian to have a pastor, right? And so I said to myself, okay, Dad, I promise you, I promise you I won't make your name bad. Because at the end of the day, whose name am I ultimately making bad? Christ. See, it, it, it boils down to order, right? It boils down to order. And a lot of times Christians like to go around order, right? Be because, because check this out. When I was beside myself and me and my first pastor wasn't getting along, he said to me, do you think that you would be where you were in life without me? I said, man, God was going to do what he was going to do without you. <laughs> See, no, 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 don't amen. Don't, don't amen that. That's wrong. That's a wrong attitude. Don't amen that. That's a wrong attitude. Now that I'm a pastor, that was so wrong. That was so wrong. And of course I'm reaping that. Of course people treat me like that now. Because I sold it. But see, this is what I had the integrity to do. In front of their church, I went back and said, Pastor, this is what was wrong in me. This was a wrong attitude. Because see, now I understand the will of God and I understand his order. And it is order for a man to follow or, or a man or woman to follow a pastor, right? And to have hold him up in high regard, right? It's not for me to tear someone down and to get beside myself because he wasn't wanting, wanting me to do what I wanted to do. That's all it was. I was something that I wanted to do and he didn't want me to do it. And so because of that, we started fighting. You got something to say? Oh, you're stretching. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. 
<laughs> I apologize, my brother. <laughs> I thought, because in Bible study, you know how we do in Bible study. Not in your own strength, for it is God who is all the while effectually at work in you. See, not in your own strength. Effectually means this, this energy, this power, this Holy Spirit is what's really working in you. See, see, talent and calling have nothing to do with you. Talent and calling let you know that it's not about you at all. Do you know how many times I, I dropped out of public speaking when I was in school? Do you know the first time I had to preach, I stood across the street outside of the church crying because I just didn't know if I could do this or not? Now I come in here without notes. I remember when I used to write my sermons out in notebooks and write them out, and I would be glued to the pulpit because I was so scared not to have my notebook. But when I started realizing this thing is more about God and not me and my ability, and so what, I never passed a public speaking class. I trust in God. See, I was trusting myself in all those times where I had to write everything out. But now I understand what God has done, and I understand the gift and the calling. And so now I trust in him to accomplish what I need to do. See, see, listen, listen. This here is the will of God for my life to be a preacher, right? To be a pastor, to be a teacher. This is the will of God. At the moment that I embrace it for me, and, and listen, his will for me is the moment that I flourish in it. When I think it's about me accomplishing something, I'll always fail. You see what I'm saying? And so you can take his gifting and his calling and make it about you and never be effective. And never be effective. And the reason why you're ineffective, because it's not about bringing glory to the kingdom. It's about exalting yourself. You have many preachers who are being followed based off gifting and talent, and they don't have a heart for people at all. Energizing and creating you the power and desire both to will and to work for his good pleasure and satisfaction and delight. Next slide. So do all things without your gr gr uh, uh, grouchy self, right? Fault finding and complaining against God and questioning and doubting among yourselves. Look, 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 look. Serving, serving God, serving, serving. It takes endurance. It takes one overcoming yourself. Listen, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. The deficits in me have nothing to do with you serving God. The way the way I am has nothing to do with you because listen when we first started I gave her the blues she saw a side of me she saw a side of me listen, listen let, me, let me tell you how good it was I asked Jadel who's not here to be the treasurer right come on preach baby sing I asked Janelle to be the treasurer Janelle said yes Two days later, she said, Nikki would be better because Janelle grew up with me. She knows me, right? She said, mm-mm, I ain't doing that one, <laughs> right? As time Nikki didn't know me well, so she didn't know how my mind works, and she didn't know the system that I was trying to put in place. And so because of that, we would... She wouldn't because she's not like that. But then I would be like, what are you doing? Why'd you do that? Blah, blah, blah. What, what, why didn't you just tell me? Right? And she said, I think I just should just quit. No, don't quit. <laughs> right? But, but, but she never quit because of my deficits. Because I, I, I don't sometimes... I don't know how to compromise and work with people, right? Like, like I've been told, 
I don't think, no, no, I'm being serious. I've been told, but I, I, I never see it, right? Everyone in my whole life has always told me that you think you're never wrong. Well, birds of a feather. I got the mic, cuz. Yeah, watch yourself. <clears throat> so do all things without grumbling and fault finding and complaining against God and questioning and doubting among yourselves. It's, listen, listen. The first voice, the first voice was God's to serve him. Every voice that comes after that is either yours or the devil. If you don't hear God again, you should be doing exactly what God said five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years ago. When God called me in 2006 to preach, he didn't have to reiterate in 2008 and 2010 and 2012 and 14 and 16. He didn't have to tell me again. What he told me was, it's time. And within those two words, there was so much revelation that I knew it was time for me to preach. As soon as he said it was the time, I sat in service like this for an hour. Because now it's my ability. This is what I'm thinking. I got to preach. And there's no way I can talk in front of people. And I'm petrified. And I walked up to my pastor while he was preaching. I couldn't sit there any longer. I walked up to him, and, and he's trying to get around me, and he finally stopped. Like, what are you doing? And I said, God told me it's time. Like this. God told me it's time. <laughs> like right now, imagine somebody getting up while I'm teaching. And he said, time for what? And I said, for me to preach. And he jumped up in the air. And he said, everyone stand to their feet. Now, listen, now I got to figure out how to do this. No, I don't. The same thing that got me saved, the same thing that got me delivered, the same thing that got me to being a deacon, the same thing that got me to understand the word was nothing but faith. It was trusting in the ways of God. But see, now all of a sudden, when it talk, brought me up out of my comfort zone, I had to find out without grumbling and fault finding and questioning and doubting amongst myself, myself, can I really do this? No, you can't. But are you either going to listen to God and walk in his will, or are you going to listen to the enemy? Because check this out. Matter of fact, I forgot a part. He was praying for everyone before I walked up to him. And this is what the enemy said to me. He's going to pray for everyone and lay hands and not you. He went just like this. He prayed and laid hands. He prayed and laid hands. He prayed and laid hands and skipped right over me. The enemy told me he was going to do that beforehand. He said, God didn't call you to ministry. He came back around and skipped me again. I grabbed him. He about this big, right? I grabbed him and was holding. Put my... Touch me. Touch me. He's fighting to get away from me. Get off me. God said, I told you it's time, and that's it. And I've been doing exactly what he said since 2006. I've been doing exactly what he said since 2006. He, listen, listen. In 2009, he told me about new life. New life didn't start to 2012. Because there was something in me that wasn't ready. See, if I'd have ran out the door in 2009, we might not be here in 2018. Y'all you, 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 got to understand this cultivating in the will of God. There's something in you that needs to be given up. You have to give up to get in God's will. You have to surrender you in order to gain him. You'll never have him if you don't surrender you. And you'll be a churchgoer. And listen, listen, and then it'll be a spotty churchgoer. That's why I say you at least could be religious about it. If it's not about relationship, then you at least could be religious and just show up and give God honor, reverence, and all. Right? L listen, we left that other building because we couldn't fit. We could have stayed with the way that it has been the last six months. We could have stayed in that other building. And this is what he's saying. Where is your reverence for God? 
when you finally get to a place where it's comfortable in life and then you say, okay, I can just skedaddle on God. I can understand making plans and doing something in life and enjoying your life, but when you're just absent, that's why he said, where are y'all at? Not y'all, because most of the people that are here are here consistently. Why does God have to relocate you? Because you think he can't see, but he says, I'm the one who sees in the dark. It's like light to me. Just because you don't feel him and you're numb doesn't mean that he don't see you. you know, look, 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 look at him, look, look, look at him. Oh, now you want to call me. You broke, fell down and skinned your little knee. Oh, God. No, now you want to call me. When if you'd have just been in position in my will, you would have never scathed yourself. I got five minutes. Y'all going to get it. Come on. <laughs> Minister Brad wasn't here. I got a lot of time. <laughs> See, listen, 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 listen to this. Look, look at this right here. This is so important that you may show yourself to be blameless and godless. Innocent and uncontaminated children of God without blemish. L listen, listen. Does that sound like being perfect? Huh? Come on, be honest. Listen, listen. Blameless, guileless, innocent, uncontaminated, children of God without blemish, faultless, unrebukable, in the midst of a crooked and wicked generation, spiritually perverted and perverse, among whom you are seen as bright lights, stars or beacons shining out clearly in a, in a dark world. That sounds like perfect, right? Come on, let's be honest. Have, have any of us met perfection yet? So, 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 so check this out. This is, this, is, this is how merciful our God is. That, that we are people who are a fault, but because we strive for perfection, because we yearn for the will of God, he looks at us at the intentions of the heart. He said, I tried the reins of the heart. He said, I'm on the inside checking your heart, not your action. I could care less what face you present to me. I'm trying to find out what's going on in your soul. Because if it's always praise the Lord, and when soon the person turns their back, you're like, Shh. oh, God sees that. God sees that. And so what you have to realize is it's better for me if I got a problem with you. Come on, let's, let's go talk for a second. Yo, I got an issue. I got an issue, right? Because, because check this out. What's in here, I don't want to walk around with. I don't want to walk around with it. You can have it, right? Because I want to I wanna be so wide open to God. I don't want to miss what God has for me. Listen, listen. This, this is what most people say. Because of you? No, because of me. I don't want to miss what God has for me because of me. Because check this out. If Antoine does something that I don't like, then I have to check myself. What is it about me that doesn't like him? I got to check me, right? Because if I don't check me, then, then, then I'm going to say, he made me do it. And how do you have the power to make me do anything that is not in the will of God? I don't give you that much power. I don't give you that much space. Right? Why? Are you allowing people to pay rent in places where there should be no vacancy? And, and, so, and so this innocent and uncontaminated, most of the time the reason why we're contaminated is because of our perspectives. Not because of the things that we've done, because as we strive for perfections, we are going to make mistakes. We are not God. We should be like Christ in the earth. We should be striving for perfection. We should, we, should be, we, should be, we should be working hard to be like Jesus. 
denying myself, kill spiritual suicide, killing myself so I can be like him, so I can be revived with this resurrection power that's in God. But at the same time, I'm not going to give you the space to, for you to say, she made me do it. Mm -mm. I did it because I wanted to cuss you out. I don't cuss. I'm just using it for example. I've learned, I've learned to put that in check because this thing right here is unruly. And if you don't put it in check, listen, if you don't put it in check, what's in here is eventually going to come out of here. So, so, so what has to be checked first, this or this, right? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The reason why you keep cussing people out, because that's what's in abundance in your heart. And then on Sunday, you want to say, hallelujah. And the Bible says, how does blessings and curses come out of the same mouth? How? Okay, okay. Well, Pastor, you ain't perfect. There's somewhere else. But, but what I can check, I am checking. There's this little thing that, that, that can I, the Bible says, confess your faults to one another. There's this little thing, and, and I, I mean, it's about this big. And I don't understand why granules of sugar have so much control over my life. Why you start laughing before I finish? And it is contaminating and making me rebukable by God. Come on, next slide. I'm going to let y'all go. Next slide. Next slide. Aquinas a qu a qu whatever his name is, responds that divine knowing is necessarily related to the created thing known because the knowledge in the knower is one with his essence. Come on, next slide. Look. All things exist necessarily in God, but nothing exists necessarily outside of him. But God need only will what is necessary of his own nature. Therefore, God need only will other things as they exist in him, but not as they exist in themselves outside of him. So, so what I'm trying to say is, is that these outside variables that have nothing to do with God, you got to stop internalizing these things. You got to let this stuff roll off your back like water off a duck's back. You just got to, you know, at the end, you know how the duck does it at the end? He just shakes the water. You just got to, come on, everybody do that in your seat. Just shake it off. Just shake it off. See that? See, you didn't shake. <laughs> Gotta shake it off. Shake, shake, shake. Shake the devil off. Come on, y'all do it. You don't know that said. In the name of Jesus, shake. Mr. Brad would have a heart. He'd be running around here right now. Oh, my God. Outside variables have nothing to do with the will of God. You have to make a confession today, right? You have to make a confession and say, God, I'm sorry that I've been living outside of your will. Please reintroduce me to your will today. Please reintroduce me to how you want me to operate, what I should say, what I should touch, how I should feel about things. Create and recreate, creating me a clean heart and renewing me a right spirit. Reintroduce yourself to the will of God. Touch and agree with God today about your life because it's in this place is where you'll prosper. Without this, his will, you will get frustrated with church because we promise a whole lot and nothing is produced. But let me tell you something. It's not produced on the outside of you. It's produced on the inside of you. Amen? Amen. Come on, give God praise. Hallelujah.